Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is a non-medical video, but it's interesting nonetheless. And that's why I wanted to go over my new garage door opener. I know, kind of weird, right? However, I think the old garage door opener is maybe a little more fascinating because of some of the safety precautions, the things like uh, the limit switches, etc., cetera, um, that were all manual. It was back in the day, it was all manual. It was beautiful because it was easy to adjust and easy to understand. However, it was all manual. So let's go ahead and take a look at the old versus the new. All right, guys. So this is the beast that I am taking out, which is a, a little bit longer than the one that I just put in. The rail is heavier duty. You can tell. I mean, look at that. It's like, almost like an I-beam style rail. And this is the power head down here. Now, these guys right here are your limit switches. And you can see that it was just a manual adjustment. You see that? Now these kind of limit switches, these were Hall effect sensors. So it's a magnetic pickup. And down there, there's another magnetic pickup. And one of the interesting things about this older style is it has an Acme screw. You see that? So it, it was extremely reliable, and, but it was loud. <laughs> and uh, you know, I like how the Acme screw is actually embedded into the rail and it keeps it clean. Which is pretty important, you know, considering it's in a garage. And this guy here engages and disengages the trolley anywhere on the screw, which is pretty cool. I guess because of the way that this guy is designed, you can engage and disengage at any point. You have to have a way of doing limit switches, which you can see this one right here. And the reason you have to have the limit switches is because this indexes itself all over the place you know i can index it here bam i can index it down here bam so how would this guy ever know where its home position is you can see um i'll show you in a minute the new one why it's different but let's go ahead and take a look at the other safety feature so this is one of the safety features it is a uh it's a hall effect sensor and there's a piece of metal or a magnet it's right here on the trolley and it gets picked up and that's how you figure out how far it goes up or down. Now the other thing, you have a receiver, which is the green, and you have a sender, which is around here someplace. You can see my new ones, kind of flashy, kind of new, fascinating. Uh, these are infrared transmitters and receivers. And you can see the other one is way down there. I'll tell you, what, I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this guy over. It is such a beast. Let's see if I can get into the power head and show you guys the power head. Now, the ratings on these guys is completely false. <laughs> in fact, the one that I just did, um, they said it's a quarter horsepower. It's that guy way up there, right there. Quarter horsepower, and uh, when I was looking at it, I was like, there's no way that's a quarter horsepower. And then you look on the box, right over there, and there's a little asterisk. An asterisk means equivalent to a quarter horsepower lifting capabilities, which means they really just have a gear reduction and a tiny little motor. I'm so aggravated. Um, so you can see up here, these are the connecting points for your wall control box, which is basically just an open and close switch. And um, you're also gonna have your infrared sender and receiver. They are connected in parallel, pretty cool. And on the old ones, you can see that they have potentiometers for your open and close force. Interesting. The new one's all digital. And you can see that I still have incandescent bulbs in this bad boy. Eh, I don't think I can get in to see the motor. Anyway, you can tell based on the pop metal and everything, <laughs> just how old this tech is. I mean, this is a 20 year old garage door opener. Let's go ahead and see the results. You can see my studio. What's going on right here is the new one. And is there a, a finger that's not so dirty? Okay, so you can see my insulated and padded door. Now this is way quieter than the one that I just took down. Way quieter. All right, so this is an interesting one. It's interesting because it only indexes at one point. This is the trolley. And you can see I can disengage it. And there is a indexing slug right there you see that this piece right here it only is on the belt at one point a belt or chain there's two different models you can see that it greased it nice and heavily 
So this guy only is in one point. So what that enabled them to do, here, I'm gonna latch it, there we go. What it enabled them to do is have soft limits. So you can program your limits for up and down because the door will only index at one point ever. Pretty interesting. And another interesting design choice is that indexing slug is also a tensioner for both sides. And you can see the jam nuts here and here. Really simple design. Very interesting. Now I should have left the I should have left the plastic off so you could see the little motor that is in there. It's sad. But this is a belt driven system and it is extremely quiet. Pretty cool. It utilizes a lot of the same hardware. And you can see right down there, that is my receiver. The green's receiver, the red is the transmitter. And if I had a camera that could do infrared, I would show you that. So, cool new technology. Boop. Listen to how quiet that is. Sounds like that motor's really struggling though. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And you can see it hits the soft limits and we are done. So guys, it's just a interesting little breakdown of a problem. Um, so my garage door opener quit working. It, it quit while it was all the way up. No grinding gears, no nothing. Maybe, maybe I'll disconnect the track now that I've explained what the garage door opening system entails maybe i will disconnect the track and let's do a breakdown anatomy of a failure on this motor maybe it didn't fail like i said motors really don't fail that often however this one here just quit responding it was it was intermittent before and after anyway so i'm thinking it's the control circuitry i think the motor is absolutely fine and i'm thinking maybe i'm going to do an anatomy of failure on that guy so that you guys can maybe get a, a glimpse of what's going on in my world. It's just crazy. Today is a garage door opener. Yesterday was a toilet, today's a garage door opener. You know, it's, things always break in a house, you know? Anyway, uh, that's it. And uh, it's pretty simple, but yet very complex. And the design really hasn't changed in 30 years. Thanks for watching, guys.